So generally speaking, archives are ways of organising the materials we work with, including media, data, objects, ideas, and so on. The theory of the archive is about how we use media, but not only media, to store things. So we, as an increasingly technological society, engage in archives in everyday life. Parika notes that we are mini archivists ourselves in this information society. The real-time web, for example, captures a permanent record of the events that occur online, making users accidental archivists, as Matthew Ogle suggests. If I were to ask you, what were you thinking about on December 26, 2006, you would probably have no idea, but Twitter and Facebook might. Ogle explains that without deliberate planning, we have created amazing new tools for remembering. The real-time web might just be the most elaborate and widely adopted architecture for self-archival ever created. So archive fever refers to when a person collects facts and data about a specific topic. For example, when a rugby fan collects dates and information about who won the game in a specific given year. In this way, archives are a way to avoid the possibility of forgetfulness that is apparent in all human beings. As Julie Enza states, there is no archive without consignation in an external place which assures the possibility of memorization, of repetition, of reproduction or of re-impression, backing the fact that we look to archives to remember important things in our daily lives.